My sister-in-law suddenly installed four air conditioners in the house where I live with my mother. I thanked her, but I was curious where the money came from. I did it myself. Don't worry about it. I had a bad feeling about her response. Rushing to my room, I checked my bank book. I found it, feeling relieved for a moment. However, my name is Cindy Smith. I'm living with my 83-year-old mother, Mary. I used to work as a nurse until two years ago. But since retiring at 60, I've been devoted to caring for my mother, who has dementia. My father became disabled in a traffic accident when I was 30. Concerned about him, I returned home. Before I knew it, I missed the opportunity to marry as I was busy with work and caring for him, realizing that everyone around me was married. My older brother married early and had three children. My nieces and nephews would often come to play at our home and were very attached to me. I didn't feel lonely because I treated them like my own children. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why I remained single for life. My father passed away seven years ago from pneumonia. Moreover, my brother died from illness four years ago too. Therefore, my mother developed dementia due to the loneliness. Cindy, when will you wake up? It's already morning. Mom, it's only 2 a.m. in the morning. Let's sleep a little more. Lately, I was frequently woken up in the middle of the night, and I was beginning to feel a little tired from caring for my mother. One day, the doorbell rang. Cindy, you have bags under your eyes. Eat this and cheer up. The person who brought me a gift and sent this was Susan, my brother's wife who lives nearby. Even after my brother's death, she would occasionally visit us and keep my mother company. While she didn't help with the caregiving, she allowed me a break to do housework while she was there, which was very appreciated. If you need anything, let me know. My kids have all their own families now, so I'm free. Thank you, Susan. I was truly grateful to Susan. Cindy? Mary? Hello? Susan came to visit as usual. All right, let's get the housework done while I have a chance. Today, I had to take my mother to the hospital first thing in the morning, so I haven't finished anything at home yet. Preparing dinner, cleaning, laundry, I've got a lot to do. While Susan is keeping an eye on my mother, I bustle around to try to get as much housework done as I can. While I glance at my mother's room, she's alone. Did Susan go to the restroom? Seeing that my mother is in a good mood, I return to my chores. Having finished folding the laundry, I peeked into my mother's room and she's still alone. Silently making paper craft? Mother, where's Susan? I don't know. Susan, you've been in the restroom quite a while. I wonder if she's not feeling well. Thinking this, I went to my room to put away the folded laundry. Yikes! Susan was standing in my room where no one should be, and I was surprised. Susan, what are you doing in my room? There's no air conditioner in this house, so I was looking around to see where it would be best to install one. Susan replied nonchalantly. If that's the case, she could have asked me instead of just going into my room. I was a bit peeved that she had entered my room without permission. But Susan, unaware of my mood, continued to talk while looking around. I'm very grateful to you, Cindy, for always taking care of my mother-in-law, so I'm going to gift an air conditioner for your room as well. Oh, thank you! I'm glad she's giving me an air conditioner as a gift, but I wish she hadn't entered my room without asking. But Susan didn't mean any harm. And it's a fact that I'm being helped by her visits. She's my sister-in-law. I should be patient. Thinking this, I decided not to complain about her entering my room this time. Two weeks later, the installation of the air conditioners was completed. Air conditioners were installed in each of the rooms we use, including mine, totaling four units. 
Both mother and I expressed our gratitude to Susan, who took care of all the procedures and payments. Susan, thank you. By the way, what about the money? Don't worry about it. I did it myself, she said with a cheerful smile. Really? Thank you. I showed Susan my deep appreciation, but I felt a pang of worry inside. Susan had always been a homemaker. She's supposed to be living on her pension and savings left by my brother, but she bought four air conditioners all at once? That's quite lavish, isn't it? On closer thought, it wasn't just about the air conditioners. I remember my nieces and nephews and their kids, who are Susan's grandchildren, complained that Susan always takes them out to eat. Like their parents, the kids also look up to me and affectionately call me Granny Cindy, treating me like their actual grandmother. I was craving for Granny Cindy's home-cooked food. I recall them saying this when they visited me, complaining that they're tired of the heavily seasoned restaurant foods at Susan's. Eating out with all those people every time must cost a fortune. I remember feeling worried about Susan's financial situation when I heard this. Another time, a nephew who had just graduated from high school and got a job showed up in a brand new car. Where did you get the car? I asked with my eyes wide with surprise. Granny Susan bought it for me. He said, Susan did. I exclaimed, taken aback. And to my further astonishment, he revealed that Susan has been giving expensive gifts like cars and bags to her other grandchildren as well. Why does Susan have so much money? I've been asking my nieces and nephews and their kids every chance I get. To my surprise, they all say the same thing. Granny Susan seems to have won at the slot machines. Remembering all this, I was taken aback. Could it be? I quickly went to my room to check my bank book. There it was. Thank goodness. I had been worried that when Susan was in my room uninvited the other day, she might have stolen my bank book. But I was relieved to see that wasn't the case. Just to be sure, I thought I'd also check my mother's bank book. I looked in the drawer where I usually keep it. But I couldn't find my mom's bank book. Or her seal. Mom, do you know where your bank book and seal are? I checked them the other day and put them back in their usual place. Perhaps she forgot where she usually puts them. I thought maybe she had moved them to some other place and started looking all over the house. But I couldn't find the bank book or the seal anywhere. Could it be? I decided to call Susan. Hello, Susan. I can't find my mom's bank book and seal. Do you know anything about it? I don't know. People with dementia often get paranoid about theft. Maybe your mother-in-law hid it somewhere. Susan responded, not taking me seriously. I've searched all over the house and couldn't find it, so I'm thinking about talking to the police. I tried to stir her up. What? The police? Wait a minute. I'll help you look for it. Suddenly, Susan began to panic. She hung up and arrived at our house in no time. Here they are. In Susan's hands were the bank book and seal with my mother's name on them. Why do you have them, Susan? Susan wouldn't answer my question. I opened the bank book and was stunned. Since I had been providing all of the living expenses, my mother's Social Security benefits should have been almost untouched, with a balance of several hundred thousand dollars. However, the balance recorded was less than one hundred thousand dollars. Looking closely, I could see that a total of about two hundred thousand dollars had been withdrawn several times over the past year. What's the meaning of this? Susan kept her head down in silence. You thief! When I confronted Susan, she abruptly raised her head to argue back. I'm the one taking care of your mother-in-law like this. It's only fair that I get some compensation. Why should you get all of your father-in-law's savings? It seems that Susan had been unhappy for a long time. 
ever since her father passed away and her brother renounced his inheritance. When their father died, her brother told her, Cindy, I'm sorry. I've dumped all the caregiving for our parents on you, even though I'm the eldest son. He confessed that he had always felt guilty because he believed that the reason she remained unmarried was because she had missed her chance to wed due to her work in taking care of their parents. Caring for our parents is a given. And besides, I'm not even sure I would have been married if I wasn't busy. With a laugh, <laughs> I responded. My brother then said, Actually, I should have been the one taking care of mom, but I think I only have a few years left to live. I hate to impose, Cindy, but could you please continue to look after mom? Our dad didn't leave any debt, so I will renounce my inheritance. Please use my share for mom's care and living expenses. At that time, her brother was in stage three of lung cancer and was repeatedly hospitalized. Thank you. I'll take care of mom. You should focus on your treatment. You have to stay healthy because you still have to take care of your grandchildren. And so that's how her brother ended up renouncing his inheritance. However, Susan, who seemed to resent this, subtly courted their mother's favor and skillfully investigated the whereabouts of her bank book and seal over the years after her brother's death. Moreover, this money is used for your air conditioner costs and pocket money for your great-grandchildren. Susan, who seemed to have no malicious intent, claimed with confidence that their mother would absolutely be happier if the money was used for herself and her great-grandchildren during her lifetime. As I fell silent, Susan started to say even more incomprehensible things. When your mother-in-law passes away, I will probably receive the inheritance. It's a natural right as the wife of the eldest son, even as I wondered what she meant to say by natural right. Susan asserted that since I don't have children, Naturally, the future maintenance of the grave would be done by her own children. Therefore, she claimed that the house and land should also be transferred to her as a form of compensation. Keeping quiet would only let her get carried away. What was she talking about? She claims it's for our mother, for the great-grandchildren, but that's just a camouflage. Most of it was being used for Susan's leisure expenses. I felt a boiling rage. It was impossible to have a proper discussion with this woman. Realizing this, I reported to the police that she had been arbitrarily using my mother's precious savings. A few days later, my nephews, nieces, and their children all came to my house. And Cindy, we heard everything from the police. We're really sorry that Mom was taking out Grandma's savings arbitrarily. Everyone apologized in unison and promised that they would definitely repay the $200,000 that Susan had spent, no matter how many years it took. Susan insisted that we shouldn't hesitate to buy the car, that we'll pay back the cost, even if it takes some time. Even the child of my adult nephew bowed deeply to me. It seems they're all genuinely reflecting. But the audacity of it all! Normally, winning enough money at slots to buy multiple cars is absurd, don't you think? You're all lacking a little common sense. I pointed out to my nephews and nieces who didn't question the wealth of their mother, Susan. They all nodded in embarrassment and bowed their heads again. What does Susan say about all this? They exchanged glances and replied with an apologetic tone. Mom is being stubborn about it. But Auntie, we promise we'll take responsibility. How astounding Susan could be when her children and grandchildren were here bowing their heads. No matter how much I detest Susan, I cannot fully despise her. However, these kids seem to genuinely reflect and have a long life ahead of them. Even though it's due to their lack of common sense, it's too pitiful to be tied down by debts. This incident should have been a lesson in life. With that in mind, I told them, You don't need to pay back the 200000 that Susan spent. I'll withdraw the theft report as well. But remember this incident, and grow up to be sensible adults, okay? They all nodded earnestly. I continued further. In return for not paying the money back, even after Susan's death, none of her assets will be given to any of you. I made my point clear, and none of them opposed or showed any unpleasant expressions. 
We documented this in a written agreement and received their signatures. Once the agreement was completed, the child of my nephew muttered, Cindy, we're really sorry. Can we still come over for dinner? Of course. Make sure you have plenty of talks with your grandmother. She's always happy to see her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We all smiled. These kids will be all right. They should grow into fine adults, using their mistakes as a stepping stone. That night, I drafted my will. Until now, being childless, I had intended to bequeath my estate to my dear nephews and nieces who love me, but I decided against it and instead will donate it to a welfare organization. Even though those kids were good, I couldn't get myself involved with them about their money matters. Then, half a year later, Mom, how are you doing? Who are you? I'm your daughter, Cindy. You came. That's good. My mother's dementia has significantly worsened. She doesn't even recognize me anymore. Her wandering and personal care have become very challenging. So three months ago, I had to put her in a nursing home. Now I'm living in an apartment near the facility, and I visit my mother every day. That's my life. When I put my mother in the nursing home, I made a bold move. I sold our house and land and moved to a place where Susan and others wouldn't find us. Since then, I haven't met with Susan. Even after I dropped the theft charge, there was absolutely no contact from Susan. Well, that's to be expected, but I was getting more and more irritated with her every day. Cindy, smile, smile. One day, my mother's words shocked me. If things keep going like this, I'll become a boring person full of hatred, feeling a sense of crisis. I left the house I was familiar with and decided to start life in a new place. I finished moving and called my nephews and nieces to let them know I was now living out of state. You still can't forgive mom, can you? To be frank, I don't want to meet or get involved with Susan ever again. Even when my mother passes away, sorry, but I won't contact you guys. I understand. I'm truly sorry for causing you so much distress. We all loved your beef stew, Aunt Cindy. We wish you a happiness from afar. Tears rolled down my cheeks at his words. Just as I thought, these kids were good. I want to see these kids again. It might be inconsiderate. But if Susan passes away before me, I want them to eat my beef stew again someday. I thought about that while watching the sunset. Mom, I'll come again. Cindy, you had a good smile today. At my mother's words, my heart lightens, with some time freed up since placing my mother in the care facility. I started taking walks along the local riverbank every morning and evening. The vast sky envelops me, caring for my father, working as a nurse, caring for my mother. I've dedicated my years to serving others, sparing no time to gaze at the sky or feel the wind. I don't regret it, of course, but I wonder... If I had taken a little more time for myself, could I have led a different life? As I watched a bird take flight against the wind, I thought so. Today you had a good smile. I remember the words my mother, who doesn't even remember what happened 30 minutes ago, said to me. That's right, because the me of that time is here. The me of now exists. I left my familiar place and came here to lead a new life. From now on, I will live with even more smiles. The bird from earlier is freely enjoying itself up in the sky. I will live here feeling the wind, looking up at the bright sky. I made that pledge to myself. 